All right, welcome to class two of our Intro to Cultural Anthropology class. Today we're going to be discussing the subject of anthropology more broadly. From this class, I want you to know uh, what anthropology is, a little bit about its history and how it came into existence as a discipline. I want you to know what its subdisciplines are, and I want you to know what anthropology does uh, with respect to the other social sciences. Anthropology is the study of humanity, uh, very broadly defined. Our class concerns the subdiscipline of cultural anthropology, and uh, in another class, uh, the next class, we're going to discuss this in greater detail what cultural anthropology really is. But today, we're talking about anthropology broadly defined. A very simple way uh, to think about it is, you know. If an ornithologist studies birds or an entomologist studies insects, an anthropologist is someone who studies the human species. There are many approaches to studying people. There are a set of disciplines called the social sciences, and the social sciences study very human institu uh, various human institutions. Excuse me. Political scientists study political behavior. Economists study human society, um, it, the, the institutions of human society that concern exchange and also trying to predict human decision making. Sociologists practice the empirical study of human society. There's some overlap between sociology and cultural anthropology that we'll talk about later. Anthropology, on the other hand, occupies kind of this strange place um, that overlaps the social sciences, the natural sciences, and the humanities. Um, there's a saying that anthropology is the most humanistic of the sciences, and it's also the most scientific of the humanities. Uh, it's a very broad discipline. It ranges from people who study the biological underpinnings of humanity, uh, trying to answer questions like, when did human beings come into being? Uh, what defines us from chimpanzees or orangutans? Um, to people who study the roles of uh, various rituals in the social lives of people around the world. Uh, an anthropologist named Tim Engel defined anthropology as philosophy with the people in. Um, I think that's interesting. It applies more specifically to cultural anthropology. In the early 20th century, an anthropologist uh, that we'll talk about a lot more later on named Franz Boas divided anthropology into four fields. This is called the four fields approach to anthropology. According to Boaz, the four fields are sociocultural anthropology, cultural anthropology, archaeology, linguistic anthropology, and physical or biological anthropology. Archaeology is the study of humans from the past, typically through the examination and study of human artifacts. People who study humanity through excavating ancient cities or studying old tools uh, are archaeologists. Physical or biological anthropologists are anthropologists who study the biological aspects of humanity. These anthropologists study humanity often through studying our evolutionary history. Uh, they study things like DNA, uh, hominid fossils, and sometimes living primates other living primates, non-human primates. Cultural or sociocultural anthropology is the study of human culture, typically the culture of people who are alive today. Cultural anthropologists uh, typically study humanity through conducting field work, uh, through which we go and we spend an extended period of time in person with the people in the culture that we're trying to learn about. Cultural anthropology used to be thought of as the study of non-modern or primitive peoples. However, we no longer approach it in that way. Uh, anthropologists no longer consider any living, hu any living human beings to be primitive. And uh, an anthropologist may just as well be studying the um, corporate culture of a North American business as the rituals of uh, hunter-gatherers living in the rainforest. I'll, re I'll revisit that some later. I have my own personal definition of cultural anthropology, and that is that cultural anthropology is the study of learned human behavior. Cultural anthropologists no longer believe 
and have not believed for a very long time that the um, that the differences in culture and social behavior between different groups of people around the world are due to innate biologic biological differences between us. For example, um, we do not believe that there are innate biological differences between races of people. Thus, we believe that cultural difference is accounted for by differences in the traditions that people learn and the realities of the local environments that people grow up in. Thus, when we study a culture, we are studying a set of behaviors that are learned. We'll talk more about that next time. There's also linguistic anthropology. This is the anthropological uh, study of language. This used to be seen as a much more distinct subfield of anthropology than now. Uh, today, linguistic anthropology and sociocultural anthropology overlap a lot. They've kind of grown together and um, just suffice to say that uh, in cultural anthropology, language is a very, very important thing to us as anthropologists. Uh, it's very important and we uh, spend a lot of time with it. We'll talk about that some more. Moving on, anthropology uh, came into being at roughly the same time that modern notions of race were being developed. Also, Darwinian notions of natural selection developed, bringing into popular consciousness the idea that humans are animals, uh, that we are organisms that developed on Earth over a period of millions of years, just like all of these other organisms, all these other species around us. Uh, later in the semester, we'll talk a little bit more about the importance of the notion of a nature-culture divide in, uh, across Western philosophy, including anthropology. The notion that humans are something else than the rest of Earth's organisms is an idea that's been around for a long time. Um, early anthropologists were confronted with the combination of these scientific advancements and these encounters of people around the world who felt very different to them at the time and they were very concerned with trying to figure out exactly what the relationship between humans and other organisms on earth is as well as what the relationship between all these different groups of humans on earth is um, so let's transition to talk uh, talk for a minute about the reading that I assigned to you Edward Burnett Tyler was an English anthropologist and is considered by many people to be the person who founded the thread of anthropology that would eventually become cultural anthropology. Tyler was born in 1832 and he died in 1917. So from this reading, the very first thing that we see in this introductory chapter is that he was very concerned with the notion of race. Uh, using some really uh, heavy-handed terms, he's sort of saying we humans all look very different from each other. We look so different. Uh, and from there he goes on to say that the differences in our appearance do not appear to be random. He says, you know, people who live closer to the equator tend to have a darker complexion. Uh, he is also obviously speaking to an audience of other Europeans. He keeps using these terms like we and us. He'll say, we see this, or people like us and he's definitely talking to other Europeans when he's saying that. Um, he points out uh, ancient Egyptian records that are you know over 4,000 years old and he argues that these Egyptian records uh, demonstrate races of people that are recognizable to us today. So this read can be a little bit cringy uh, from our current perspective and it reads kind of like he's trying to demonstrate in crude language how incredibly different all of us humans are from each other. However, when you put this argument in the debates of the day, the debates that he was involved with and the things that other people, other uh, anthropologists and philosophers uh, and sociologists were trying to say, you see that Tyler was actually trying to do the opposite. In his day, Many people believed that all of the races of humanity were entirely different species of animal. They came about the world in different places from unrelated ancestors. Um, 
this debate is the monogenism versus the polygenism debate. Um, monogenism or, or polygenism is this belief I just described where people believed that there are different races of people and we originated in completely different places around the world. Um, this is pretty much not a thing anymore in mainstream science, um, but in Tyler's day it was. And uh, Tyler believed in monogenism, which is the belief that human beings all started in one place together. Humanity came into existence and then spread across the world. That's monogenism. And of course, uh, today this is basically an established fact that human beings, uh, humans evolved in Africa and approximately 60,000 years ago some groups of humans started to um, migrate out of Africa and go to other places in the world. But this was not um, accepted uh, universally in Tyler's day. Um, Another belief that Tyler was uh, having to deal with, uh, that he was speaking to, that was common uh, among some of his peers and that continued into some of the mystical forms of white supremacy that have existed through time, um, was the belief that all humans are related. Um, it was kind of a monogenism belief, but the belief that non-white people are degenerate. They believed that something happened in the past that caused um, some groups of people to become something less than other groups of people. Um, and that was a belief that was in the scientific mainstream at the time as, and was considered a valid debate and was one of the things that Tyler was trying to speak to in this chapter and trying to refute. Uh, Tyler is making the argument, I know this is really low-hanging fruit by contemporary standards, um, or any standard really, but Tyler was trying to make the argument that all people on earth are related to each other and that we all share a common human ancestor. The differences that we see between us are the result of different environments that we live in, um, different environments that our ancestors have lived in. Um, However, Tyler does still believe that some forms of culture are more advanced than others. Um, and anthropologists don't believe that anymore. But Tyler still believed this. He believed, however, that um, the kinds of culture that a place, that, that, that a different people had, was driven more by necessity than someone being more degenerate than someone else, which is what a lot of his uh, contemporaries believed. Uh, Tyler also believed in the psychological uniformity of humanity, uh, which means that he believed that, generally speaking, all human beings across the, uh, across the planet are psychologically uniform. Um, this was probably what would have been considered one of the more radical ideas that he was putting forth in, in, in his day, that you could take a human being from any place in the world uh, as an infant and place them in a completely different society somewhere else and you could expect them to grow up and be um, cu culturally part of the group of people that, they, that you place them in because all humans are psychologically uniform. Um, so Tyler believed that some cultures are more advanced than others but he did believe that all human beings are psychologically capable of civilization. Tyler proposed a scheme um, that remained popular into the 20th century. Uh, like I said before, Tyler uh, was arguing in favor of the psychological uniformity of all humans. However, he believed that there was a cultural hierarchy. Um, this is what we call a cultural evolutionist perspective. Uh, we're going to talk about this a little bit later when we talk about another uh, anthropologist that we're going to read, uh, Lewis Henry Morgan. Tyler believed that there were three levels of culture. At the bottom was what he called savagery, um, which was basically what we would call a hunter-gatherer society today. These are people who uh, tend to move around, they're not sedentary, and they live off of what they find. They, they pick berries and they dig up edible roots and they hunt animals and they eat them, and that's their society. Uh, 
Tyler said the next level up from that was what he called barbarism. And that is, uh, according to Tyler, what occurs when a group of people start to cultivate crops and become sedentary or start practicing various uh, forms of agriculture or animal husbandry. And then there, of course, is civilization, uh, which is signaled by people uh, becoming literate, people starting to develop a system of writing. And he considered that to be civilization and was kind of on, on top of this hierarchy. Anthropologists do not believe this anymore. Um, this scheme is no longer accepted by anthropologists, and it has not been accepted by anthropologists for the better part of a century. However, this idea is still fairly established in, popular, in the popular imagination. Uh, this is the final point that I want to make in uh, today's lesson. The discipline of anthropology no longer considers race to be a valid category, a biologically valid category of human classification. And, as we will discuss later, anthropology no longer believes in cultural evolution. In other words, we no longer believe that some societies are more advanced than others. And we do not believe that there is a teleology in the universe that compels less advanced societies or primitive societies to advance into modern ones. However, as established as this is in anthropology today, and as long as this has been established, like I said, the better part of a century, a lot of people in our society still believe these things. Your average uh, American, for example, still believes that even if they believe in uh, technically in human equality, still believes that race is a valid biological classification of humans. Um, your average American still looks at hunter-gatherer people and sees their society as um, primitive. Uh, pe hunter-gatherer people who are alive today, living that lifestyle, uh, are seen by many people as primitive, as if they belong somewhere in the past. Uh, in a scale of ancient to modern, the discipline of anthropology does not classify humans in that way, and it has not done so for a very long time. And many of the debates uh, in early anthropology, some of the things we're going to be talking about over the next few classes, can be thought of as ver various contributions to that uh, eventual conclusion that we have now. Um, I think that's pretty much it for today. So. Um, Email me if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you next time.